Welcome in, welcome in. Another episode of Gun Talk Nation. Today, Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Lockdown, Secure Your Lifestyle, and Springfield Armory. They make guns. Lots of them. That's not, that's not their slogan. That's not. All right. So today, <laughs> that's not, I don't even think that's close. It used to do. be, their slogan used to be the first name in firearms. Because the Springfield Armory is actually a different thing in Massachusetts where they used to make muskets. And nat- the, the more you know. Now, there you go. Um, today we're welcoming in a gun dude, a gun nerd, John Patton from the Gun Collective. Welcome in, man. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> He's so, probably one of the biggest, like, like, I would say, possibly one of the biggest gun channels on the uh, interwebs. Yeah, he's one of those one of those YouTuber gun yeah. dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're up there. We so, have a pretty big audience. <laughs> like, I think I think we're like eight hundred thousand if you count everything that we do. Awesome, eight hundred thousand fans. It's pretty cool. We're happy about it. It's well, <laughs> it's well thought out, good content. We like it. I mean, I, we love it. We like well, it. Yeah, you. that's awesome. Um, and being from the, it'd be a little awkward if you didn't like it. (laughs) We have him on. Okay. The roast begin now. (laughs) We hate you and we hate your channel. So why do you suck so much? (laughs) Tell us more about why we don't like you. And, uh, so, okay. So John, for those who are listening and maybe they're not familiar with you guys, uh, give them the, give them the 30 second elevator explanation. So we are built on quick, fast, easy to digest content. That's a lot of fun. So whether it's gun news, which we do every week, whether it's a review, we do those most weeks or something about gun rights and everything in between. We've got high speed video. We've got shenanigans out our ears and uh, we just like to have fun and, and bring our passion to the viewers. Cool. And it shows how, how many years, when, how long ago did you guys start this? So the Gun Collective is a little over, it's like five and a half years. It was June of 2015 when we launched TGC. I've been doing gun videos for about a decade now. Okay. Uh, Grew up in guns? How'd you get into it? Not at all. (laughs) I was was a car guy, IT guy, and a couple of my buddies were like, ah, we should try this. And I was kind of not in, I was trying to get away from cars you know, spending thousands on car mods. And instead I decided to spend thousands on guns. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just kind of went from there at the time when I first, first got started back in like 2010 ish, I was looking around for reviews and I thought most of them were terrible. So I decided I was going to try my hand at it. And I was really, really bad at it. it was really <laughs> bad. Like my first ever gun video is out there. It's bad. Yeah. But here we are 10 years later, I'm doing it professionally and I don't, I don't know. That sounds weird to me, like a professional internet gun guy. Right. But yeah, that's, but that's, that's a, the that's reality a, of it. That's a good thing to be right now. I mean, you're going to. It's gonna, really not a bad thing. No, you could be a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> I could work for somebody else. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could work for like, uh, I don't know, Walmart or something. That'd be pretty terrible. Uh, you could be a greeter. You know, there's, there's Walmart. pros and cons to every job, I it, think, you know. Yeah. That's I don't know. A greeter is not my like passion for sixty five and beyond. I don't think that's where I'm going to end up. That's not the goal. No, that's not the goal. <laughs> Definitely pull. Where do you want to end up? That's the hey, question. Yank, yanking a trigger at age sixty five or seventy wouldn't be a bad deal. It wouldn't be bad. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, that ain't bad. <laughs> so, John, you guys do um, the TGC News, the Gun Collective News, weekly, right? Yep. Every week, every Monday evening, we release it. Uh, it just, what, what's today? Tuesday. Yeah. It went out last, uh, last night. And what are we talking week. about? What's, what's in the news lately, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tell me. It's yeah. full, of, full of really expensive stuff. There was, uh, people are finally importing the GM six links. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's mm-hmm. a Hungarian 50 <laughs> BMG bullpup. And it is really, really the, the barrel reciprocates like crazy. And uh, the mags are, you know, the gun is $14,000. The mags are 450 bucks a piece. That's it's a drop silly. in the bucket. Yeah. No I mean, that, deal, right. Sure. Just treat your car for, a, in for a 50 BMG. <laughs> I wonder what their sales projections are on that. We're going to sell 10. Two. Yeah. <laughs> well, the gun's been around since I think 2013 in its current format. So it's not a new thing. We just couldn't get them here. 
Yeah. So for, for us, it's like, we something expensive. Uh, then there was a new Gunworks bolt action that is a integrally suppressed 338 RCM. Yeah. Oh. Ruger compact. Mag- like why they chose that. I have no idea, but it's a really, they're bragging about how it's really light. It's called the light saber. Yeah. They do one, some cool oh stuff. Gosh. Their stuff oh. is incredible, but it's a $12,000. Yeah. gun. Right. Jeez. Well, here's the deal. When you start playing around, and, and this is just I, having uh, no knowledge of this gun or the cartridge, I'm going to tell you my opinion about it. Um, <laughs> this is perfect. Have you shot it yet? No. No, uh, but I have strong opinions. Um, well, You need to make a YouTube channel. I, yeah. I could definitely be a YouTuber. <laughs> oh, I got this yeah. gun in. I don't know what it is. Looks pretty nice. Um, no, but if you're, if you're trying to have something be subsonic, and I'm integrally suppressed. If you say I'm going to load it to be subsonic, mm-hmm. that's a fixed, that's a fixed speed. You know, below 1,100 feet per second, uh, depending on you know your elevation. But if you can throw a 300 grain bullet going 1,100 feet versus what uh, a 200 grain bullet, right. 300 blackout. Now it's it's more foot pounds of energy. Yep. That's just a theory for you. Well, I think I think that particular gun has no intention of being subsonic because their main thing is hunting. I think they just and long range, sound yeah, sound and recoil, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I think it's for them, it's just about the the side benefits rather than being as quiet as possible, right? But here's here's the other thing. I, I want to talk to you guys about this because I think you'll enjoy this. Palmetto State Armory put in an well, their holding company put in an offer for Remington's ammo. Yeah, that me is like massive <laughs> massive new yeah that's big news i saw that uh the 65 million dollar bid which still has to be approved um by right. the bankruptcy board or the something i don't know i'm not smart enough to understand how it all works but um <laughs> we'll see it'll be interesting if palmetto can own and we were kind of actually talking about it on one of our broadcasts uh, last week yeah if they can own an ammo company um i mean this is not like a small ammo company. Um, it's right. Barnes Bullets is part of Remington Ammo. And then, of course, Remington Ammo. And Remington Ammo is only one of three ammo companies in the U.S. that makes Rimfire. You've got Winchester, you've got Federal, and you've got Remington. And then everything else that's Rimfire is imported. You know, Agula yeah. and um, what was it Fiocchi, Ely, mm-hmm. some of those stuff. Um, you know, so that's a big deal. That's a real big deal. Yeah. So I, we'll I see what happens. It's also interesting because what they've now done, if they're able to finalize that deal, is round out what they do. If you look at their portfolio of brands, they own a forge, they own like two or three machining companies, two or three gun companies, a shooting facility, a giant online retailer. They've got everything. And Mm -hmm. to me, that's the important thing is not necessarily the specifics of it, but like the totality of that decision for them puts them in a different category. Like I see them pushing more towards a, a Vista outdoor and a Smith and Wesson yeah. type thing where they're trying to own everything well, I mean, and coming from a small online retail. That's a big, big move in yeah. the last 10 years. Yeah. Well, 10 years. Yeah. Well, and, and you look at SIG too. I mean, you look at SIG and how much they're doing right now, but man, yeah, but yeah. to have that big online presence and it's a trusted presence. I mean, guys go there like religiously. I'm there every day to look and see right. what they got. Yeah. And, and they've always kind of had that thing going about being vertically integrated when even when it's just basically AR-15s, they don't import or, 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 or buy the barrels and, uh, you know, all these different parts. They make them. They make all everything. I mean, like 90 percent of the gun they make. So um, just kind of goes in hand in hand with that, controlling their supply, controlling their operation. I hope that they would my my only little bitty concern and maybe it's not even going to be a, an issue is they are so focused on e and blowing deals out and all that stuff. I hope that they would allow the smart people at Barnes Bullets and Remington Ammo to keep developing cool yeah. new things and not just crank on ammo and and blow it out the door at that you know low prices kind of thing. I mean low prices are great. We love that, but um you know I don't want to lose the innovation. I I would hope that they don't I mean they seem like they're smart enough to not do that. Yeah. You know they they've got they've got the Lead Star Arms brand which is 
what they call premium. I've never shot ones. So I have no concept. They're but cool. <laughs> They're really cool. I, I, well, there you go. So I, I would hope that using that logic, they would just say, look, you know, yes, they would, in my opinion, the smart thing to do would be to create some, you know, uh, affordable budget brand of ammo, whether that re retains the Remington name or not. I don't personally care, but then, you know, still offer those premium products and still funnel them through normal retail as well. That's, that's an important part of that is, I think spreading potentially a Palmetto name or something under their umbrella out to retailers that is beyond their online thing. Yeah. And they've got, um, UMC yeah. is their real cheap ball ammo stuff that, that, that Remington does. Um, so that, that is, that's big news. Um, man, it's a weird deal because that whole Remington group is full of these <laughs> brands that are brands that people love. And are historical. I mean, Remington's 200 years old. Marlin is an old, trusted company yep. that people love. They started out with a Marlin lever, lever gun, and you have DPMS yep. and all Bushmaster, all these stuff. And and uh, I just, you know, I kind of, I know stuff comes and goes, you know. I, but I kind of Le hope that legacy, some of those brands, can, yeah, legacy can brands, like you don't see in this much trouble typically. Yeah, like, legacy brands. I don't know if it's a like. A leadership thing, then they just can't get it together. But they've been in trouble for quite a while. Yeah, I, I think the issue is that once a company reaches a certain point, oftentimes they bring in some CEO from some unrelated industry mm -hmm. or some you know leadership changes, like you're saying, and that person is not a gun guy. He has to learn how to be a gun guy or a gun girl or whatever. Uh, I think that's the issue is a lot of these companies are pointing to shareholders and things like that. And they've lost passion at the top. And that oftentimes leads to the company just crashing and burning. Yes. Well, and, and also you have the investment banker people running it who uh, I can't say that I know this to be true for them specifically, but there have been cases <laughs> of the investment banker type folks raping and pillaging companies. Um, mm -hmm. You know, taking out loans from one LLC to another LLC to do this, to do that, yep. to play with the uh, the shareholder, you know, the stock prices and shareholder uh, earnings and yeah. that, that kind of thing. So it becomes less about let's make a good product and, and have longevity. It's more about what can we do in the next 36 months? Turn and burn. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, well, so you get to play with lots of cool guns and, and all that. Um, any, any ones this – I hacked this year that have let's get his top five piqued your your interest. Yeah, the top, top three, top four and a half, top five, top five. Your top five concealed carry guns for this top, year. I'll just say f guns, fun guns that you've played no. with this year. Concealed carry is is dumb for me because I just carry whatever I, you know. <laughs> I don't care. I, I don't care if it's big or not. Most people are like, that's a six inch barrel. You can't. Uh, no, we'll carry whatever. Uh, let's see. In recent memory. The uh, Shadow Systems MR920L, it's a Glock mag fed gun, but it's theirs from the ground up. It looks similar to a Glock. Mm -hmm. It's in that vein, but it's, in my opinion, better in a lot of ways. It's <gasps> about a yes. dollar gun. There is a guess. Yeah. Have you shot it, Ryan? <laughs> no. Have you shot that? Oh, my gosh. We shot it. So uh, our cameraman editor, Jace, and I were walking down the line, and I think you went one way. I went the other way. Oh, it shot. At SHOT Show. Yeah. And we found this. I mean, it was a real small little area, and they were like, hey, come here and shoot the shadow systems. And I'm like, what is this? Is this is this a full custom? No, it's not. It, it was pleasurable to shoot. Yeah. I mean, our... Our editor and I were like, "Holy crap! It's, yeah. it's a good one. It's a good one. It's it's better than I expected it to be. Yeah. A lot of those custom Glocks end up feeling like a rattle can. Yeah, you know, they they tend to just I don't know. They they're not as tight as you would want a, a gun that's two thousand dollars. But right. this is sort of the ground up version of what those should be, and it's super tight." It's accurate, and I, I was impressed with it. Yeah. Um, then, let's see, what else is on my list of stuff that was great? I like the Zev OZ9 a lot. That's something we shot a lot this year, and I really, really enjoy that gun. And again, Glock Mag. Uh, what else? 
the IWI Masada is really good. Yeah. That that surprised me at that price point. I think it's like four fifty ish. Yeah, detail, that's something like that. That's crazy. Yeah, there are it's a lot of bang for buck. It's got the the optic cut, you know, decent capacity, good trigger, yada yada. It's it's good for the money. Uh, and then I'll I'll round I'll cap it off with two Taurus guns. Okay. Surprised me. Both I used to just crap all over Taurus. <laughs> I really did. Like I was like, these are terrible guns, don't buy one. And then I started hearing about the G2C when that came about. And I was like, yep. you know, a lot of people are, this is really good. I'm like, hmm, I just, I can't do it. We got in uh, the G3 and the G3C, and I prefer the full size, the G3. I think it is the best budget gun I've ever put my hands on. Yeah, we yeah. we shot the G. Well, we shot both of them. We shot both of them. I was more. I I like the G3C. Yeah, that, that was, was kind of. I was pleasantly surprised, yeah. and it's kind of like you go. Wow. Okay. Cause I'm you're, I guess maybe my expectations were like, well, we'll see how it is. Cause it's less expensive. That's right. what Taurus's brand is about. We're going to make, you know, value priced guns that are accessible to any, any budget kind of thing. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, still, it wasn't like, well, for, for not that much money, it's not bad. No, I mean, it was a, a good shooting gun. Yeah. I, I think it, it hits above its weight class in a lot of ways. I, it definitely doesn't feel like a four or five, you know, four or $500 gun. I don't think it feels that way. The finish isn't quite as nice. You know, it's, it's just not that type of gun, but for, I think it's 250, $300, right. That's really, really reasonable for what you're getting out of that gun. And then the TX 22, which I, yes. I know these guns aren't like brand new. <laughs> the TX 22 shocked me. We didn't get one in hand until the last year or so. And we actually, I just, we taught my mom how to shoot this past weekend with oh. and there is no other 22 that checks the boxes like that gun does. It's a big there, full there are, size yeah. 22. There's a lot of really good 22s on the market. You know, the ones that the, the Ruger, the Browning, uh, those two stand out to me as like top of the, the food chain, but there's a lot of really good ones. We put it head to head with the Glock 44. The Glock is a decent gun. It's not trash by any means. The mags are fantastic for the Glock, but 17 rounds of 22 in a decent package that's comfortable for me. That's a huge win. Oh, absolutely. And it's reliable. <laughs> so what you were talking about is like you kind of had your opinion about Taurus and mm-hmm. Oh boy, let's talk about YouTube. <laughs> so, you know, YouTube is great, but um, there's this thing on YouTube, this feature they have that's called comments, and um, <laughs> well, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I don't know why they included this feature, but it's there because opinions just, matter. <laughs> everyone's got I, one. I mean, yeah. So, so I guess what I was trying to get at is. Um, the, the comments on YouTube can be very funny or frustrating or bizarre um, or good or good. But um, there are a lot of people who have strong opinions about products they've never used. Like, you know, oh, I, w- I would never shoot I would, anything like Taurus this. Is, I mean, Taurus is crap. Have you shot one? Have you shot this? No, I that's... wouldn't even bother. Well, then you're not going to know. I mean, don't you find that to be true, John? Uh Oh. Do we lose you? I think it's <laughs> he's it's it's uh it says my internet connection is unstable oh, I'm on Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, well, he's crafting his twenty twenty. He's everybody. crafting his response carefully. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fiddling with the dials on the internet. <laughs> uh, I think the comment sections are very very weird. I think there's a lot of uh, confirmation bias that happens. You know, there's a lot of I bought this, so it's good, mm-hmm. and that is just poison. I think that is. I think honestly, I think a lot of people come to watch review type videos on YouTube just to make sure that they bought the right thing, yes. or because they're bored. It's <laughs> yeah. it's a confirmation, I, and and a lot of I'm, I mean, I've got buddies who do the same thing. Well, I mm-hmm. bought it because that's what I that's just what I want. That's the cool new thing and I just want confirmation that I did the right thing. We we get that on Gun Talk Radio all the time. Guy will call in and say, "Hey Tom, I wanted to see what you thought about and he'll just list something, the Taurus G3C." And uh and, and Tom will go, 
So how long have you had it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I just bought it. I'm 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 really I like it. I hadn't got it to the range yet, but I like the feel of it. I just want to see yeah. your thoughts on it. What do you think about it? Well, what do you want me to say? You want me to say that what you just did is was a bad idea? I mean, it doesn't not that it was or wasn't, but it's just funny how people will do that. Um, but I, the, you know, it's the same thing about like things that we will do, that you'll do, that we'll do. Uh, on camera and test things. Let's let's test. We, we we particularly kind of enjoy testing bullets and ballistics and that kind of thing. And sure. um, there's never like a, a one answer for that because the no. way bullets behave can vary from like box to box in in jug of water or gel to gel, you know. But um, people have all these strong opinions about what works and what doesn't, what will get you killed on the streets. But they haven't <laughs> tested a damn thing. Right. <laughs> They've never shot it themselves. And it's just a frustration. Um, you know, and that can happen with a brand where they've, they've been either told that it's no good or they had a bad experience 13 years ago with a gun. Here's the deal with like, with all web-based comments or anything like that, you can go on right now, whether you believe Taurus is the best thing ever, whether it's mediocre or where it's just trash, you can find any one of those things on the internet to support what you already believe. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. You can find whatever you want to believe and someone will back it up. <laughs> yes. This you is also true. have no context as to why the person said what they said. Right. You know, somebody yeah. somebody could <laughs> just crap all over something and literally just be mad that they bumped it into like say a guy is mad at his carry gun because he bumped it and it hurt him. Like he's gonna crap <laughs> all over that on the internet and give no context. Sure. And yeah. honestly, some people don't even know why they say certain things. I mean, I uh I've been kind of going through this like process of uh self understand like trying to be aware of why I do so certain things. And one of the the things that I realize is these internet trolls, I used to be that I would <laughs> literally in the car, in my car days, I would purpose, I would figure out what somebody liked and then I would tear them apart through the internet and say these horrible things. And that helps me honestly understand why some of these people do what they do. Yeah. You don't, you don't have any context into who these people are leaving, you know, ridiculous comments, but at the same time, you're going to get them. You're yeah. just going to get them. Yeah. That's just part of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the best thing, the best advice I've ever received um, was don't engage. Just because yeah. <laughs> there's no, don't there's, feed the trolls. Don't, just, yeah, exactly. Don't feed them. Just you, you, you know, the good comments, you're like, Hey, thanks for, thanks for the support. Thanks for reaching out. But man, anytime you engage with someone, they're going to believe what they're going to believe. Right. And then no matter what you say or do, or try to make it up to them. Doesn't What's worse matter. now, you know, with, with social media doing what it has done and dividing people, you know, creating echo chambers, people are far, far less likely now to change their opinion through a comment because, you know, we as humans do not like to be told that we are wrong about something. We dig in when we feel like we're wrong. We'll dig in and say, no, you, no, you, no, you. It's always this this sort of weird reaction that we have instead of going, oh, maybe I am. Right. And through an internet comment, like you're just not. The same <laughs> thing goes on any any platform. It doesn't matter where on the internet. You're just not going to change somebody's mind through a comment. It's yeah. very, very. Yeah, definitely. That's so funny. So as you've over the years shot a lot of guns and tested things and all that, um, any ones that come to mind that were kind of a surprise or or something that was real weird that happened on the range? I mean, we, I know we have stories of weird stuff happening with various uh, scopes. I still I still think broken reticles. Yeah, I still think um, one of our best things, though, is when we, you know, we set up our our filming in large part, you know, to air after the shot show, which is the big trade show for the shooting industry. Right. And. We tell them, you know, have them range ready. We're going <laughs> to shoot these. And inevitably, it happens every year. We get someone that they come down. They fly down to us yeah. to film this. And they know they're going to be on camera shooting this. Bring range clothes. Make sure the guns are range ready. You get out there. First trigger. No firing pins. Yes. <laughs> they send us show guns. 
with no firing pins. No That's, firing pins. Believe it or not, that happens often. That's that's shocking. I shouldn't say it's, <laughs> it's more like disappointing. Yes. You know, when your parents yell at you and they say they're disappointed, they're not mad, they're just disappointed. Yeah, it's that's, worse. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's so worse. Oh, and the company representative that is here, they're just like, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah. my God. They, they said I don't, this. You know. When it comes to weird stuff on the range, I can't. We've we've had a lot of guns just not work for some unknown reason. Things that like we'll get it out to the range and go, wait, why is this like this? How did you not see this? <laughs> right. Like uh, gas blocks, like hitting rails and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I understand that you want a slim rail, but come on, shoot the gun, right? You know. <laughs> and also, if you're gonna send it to some media member, maybe at least double check that particular gun to make sure it's good. Right. <laughs> Yeah, at least, you know, shoot it once or twice, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, well, I, I also, I get it. Like, at one hand, yes, shoot it. On the other hand, send me something off the factory floor that a consumer would get. Right, and, and that's know? and like, that was going to be my next point, was a lot of times, like, what you're getting and what we're getting are pre-production. This is true. Like, models. So, so a lot of times I can't fault them, but I'm like, man, just, like, send me the finished product. Yeah, like that's what we want. We want what the average Joe is going to go up to the store and say, "I want that." You yeah, know, that's what I we want. I think it comes down to just like, just like the consumer shouldn't be R and D, media shouldn't be R and D either. You shouldn't that, send me a gun that you know might have problems <laughs> it, oh, without telling me. I, sure, if you're like, "Hey, this might be a little weird. We're working through it. We're working on it." Okay, I can I can roll that in. I can I can take that on board, but. Don't send it to me and, and then be like, oh, yeah, we knew that was going to break. Yeah. Like, Come on, it's you like, jerk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at like, the give range. Me, give me a little heads up. Yeah. Like, hey, we want your feedback on these are the features that we're looking at that we need your advice on or, or right, guidance. Right. Something. Yeah. Something. So yeah, I, I've seen I've seen guns come with the wrong buffer spring in an AR. That was shocking. I got a prototype gun one time that was supposed to be. They, this company said, we are going to send you production number, like, I don't know, five or something. We're going to send you an early one. It's going to be great. And they sent a prototype. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why do I have this? Why do I have a gun that's not ready? Yeah, I can't, put, I can't show the, the magwell being all jagged and nasty. Yeah. Right. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, yeah, you're right. It's, it's kind of neat to... to play with prototypes and go, wow, okay, this is what it's like in that process. But you can't show it to the audience to say, hey, here's the gun. Here's what it looks right, like. Here's what you're going to get because it's oftentimes it changes after that. Oh, for sure. We we have that. We have that a lot. I think I think on the optics end, like we'll get something in and they're like, well, what you what you showed is not what it's going to be at the, the end. I'm like, well, why did you send it to us? Like right. that that doesn't. Yeah, what what are we doing well, here? You expect me to cover X and you deliver Y? Like, <laughs> I, uh, I I think there are a lot of people that get behind and it's like we oh, need yeah. to get the the marketing part out there, the coverage out there. But I mean, the gun the gun or the scope or the whatever yeah. is not ready for prime time. But we don't want to wait. I think I think a lot of that just comes down to people not understanding the role of media in the gun industry. I, you know, they they I think a lot of people in the gun industry that work in marketing and have been there for a long time tend to lean on media as their employees almost like, hey, just do what we say you should do and say what we say you should say. And that, that kind of the arguably that comes from the uh, the written side of things and what what tends to happen now with newer media and people that are just tired of that stuff it's like don't waste my time there are eight million other things that i could be doing showing etc right what are we doing when you're sending me a gun that doesn't work you've essentially wasted my day right you know why yeah. are why are we here what are you doing <laughs> think yeah. use your big boy brain you <laughs> think. know so, uh, and what's on the horizon for us, John? I mean, we got an election coming up. We've got oh, um, all kinds of, nobody can find, according to everybody I hear right. from, 
I can't find any guns. I can't find any ammo. I mean, I walk into our local gun they, shop and he's got guns and ammo, yeah. but I'm like, they I want don't. they want us to lead them by the hand and deliver. Here you, you go. You might have to go to more than one place. Yeah. Or you might have to actually buy something online. You know, you may not have to do, just go to the one Jim Bob's that sells yeah. 30 dot six rifles. It only all the goes time. to one place. I think I think what a lot of folks are doing is I can't find it means I can't find it at a price I'm willing to pay. Yeah, I think there's like a caveat that people aren't putting on there because that's <laughs> there's stuff out there. The gun industry didn't just stop making it. Right. You know, sure the supply is way down and and things are a little tight, but it's out there. I mean, the, every company that I've talked to during all this is like we're running full tilt trying to get it in stock yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I think, you know, talking about how this is going to go, I think the ammo panic is going to last at least another six months, if not longer, depending on what happens in November. If we if we end up with a, a Democrat in office, the end of the year will be nothing in stock at all anywhere. Yeah. It'll be as soon as it's in, it's gone. Right. That sort of thing. But, you know, it's such a tough call. You know, I I uh, I. I don't like to speculate about the presidential election, especially after the last one. <laughs> um, but I, I think we we could be in for a wild ride if uh, Joe Biden ends up in the office. Oh, gosh. That would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Yes. We're not even going to go there, though. Please don't. <laughs> please. Yeah. Please, please, oh, please, 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 please. Yeah, Go out that. and vote, people. If you're listening to this, go out and vote. We've got to have everyone. John makes a good point, though. Because I know in probably a lot of our circles of listeners, it's hard to imagine um, the Democrat winning. It's hard for them to imagine that because there's their whole circle of people probably are like, yeah, I mean, who would vote for him and all this stuff. But like you said, four years ago, even people on our side didn't think Trump was going to win. Yeah. Right. I mean, election night, everybody's calling each other going, I can't you, believe this is happening. This? Are you I, seeing this? <laughs> so why couldn't that happen again where you're going, I can't believe this is happening? Yeah. Well, there are co- gun companies that bet on Hillary Clinton winning. Oh, for Look sure. Look at all yeah. the, the fallout. You know, but companies shut down because they had way too many, uh, way too much debt in assets that they had prepped to for this crazy gun sale thing that just didn't happen. Yeah. And, it, you know, people... I, I see it both ways. They're like, oh, what about the polls? I'm like, well, the polls didn't predict Donald Trump winning. Everybody said he wasn't going to win. Yeah. yeah. Now what? Now what? So uh, I think I think it will be an interesting ride. I I think every city in America will burn to the ground either way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think some I of that's going to be gonna matter. It's going to get yeah. crazy. Yeah. Move. Yeah, I think move to rural America. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> Man, that would be an interesting time seeing Just, people from the city try and live in the country. Oh, my gosh. What do you mean I have to drive 15 minutes to the store? <laughs> right. <laughs> They've got a, a super center, right? A Walmart super center, right? No. It's like the There's local, no Whole Foods? No, there's no none there's no of Whole that. Foods next door? No. What the heck? We got Whole Foods delivery and it's one hour. I, I want to I want to see their crops after the first year. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh. they're they're uh they're gonna learn how to grow baby corn yeah <laughs> <laughs> baby that's corn. right uh, uh I mean, so I don't know. things are gonna get weird man i think that's the the best way to summarize things are just gonna get really weird <laughs> it's it's weird that you could say that and i would go yeah, yeah. how could it get weirder <laughs> no it can <laughs> yeah uh john how can people find out more about you guys you can go to the internets and punch in the gun collective and likely my stupid face will show up <laughs> and then you just click on that and there will be some interwebs content. Uh, you can see stuff on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. That's our, our cores. Uh, we're actually going to launch a new website this week. The gun collective.com is, is being rebuilt. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it, man. We're, we're excited to see some new faces, new comments, Hopefully they're not uh, they're not super mean. <laughs> no, it's, it'd be great to see some some new folks come over. So thanks, man. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks for being thanks on. For with us. We appreciate it, man. Yeah, we like what uh, what John does. So check him out at the Gun Collective, and uh, we'll see you next week on Gun Talk Nation. 